Malaya's population grows, the problem of rice, its staple food, becomes more and more acute. Much of it comes in ships from other countries, from Burma, Thailand, Indochina. $200 million worth of other people's rice has to be imported annually into Malaya, costing money urgently needed for better homes, hospitals, roads and schools. In 1951, Malaya's rice crop was 450,000 tons, twice as much is needed. In Selangor, along the western shoreline bordering the Malacca Straits, a vast area of swampland, 500 square miles of it, is being reclaimed for paddy land, rice land. This is the Tanjong Karang irrigation scheme. When the scheme is completed, the area will be twice that of Singapore Island. Already, the strip 27 miles long and 3 miles wide has been drained and is being cultivated. A long process of flood and mud and layers of decaying vegetation have built up a huge sponge mattress which absorbs the overflow of the Burnham River during the wet season. As the swamp water level falls, the mattress shrinks and surface trees collapse adding to the thickness of the mattress. New trees spring up, and so the cycle goes on year by year, increasing the swamp. The work of clearing the jungle swamps is being carried out by the Department of Drainage and Irrigation. The scheme began in 1933, one year after the foundation of the department. In 1937, the clearing of jungle was stopped through lack of funds. But it began again two years later, when the threat of war made local food production top priority. During the Japanese occupation, no more work was done. Months of sweat and struggle were wasted. The swamp and jungle again took command. When work began again in 1945, it meant a new start. It was a hard struggle under grim conditions, a lonely, isolated struggle. Draining the land and controlling the water of the swamp goes ahead. To hold back the sea, a bund is built along the coast. This is a slow, arduous job. Massive concrete bridles the power of the formerly unruly waters. Man controls nature. Already there are 19 miles of the main canal and soon 52 miles of subsidiary canals will be dug out by powerful excavators. Canals carry water to every part of the land where good paddy will grow. And then, when the land is safe from flood, the first homes go up.
These men are real pioneers, people who risk new places. Their efforts and the profits of these untried acres will soon benefit all. Each pioneer gets three acres for paddy, and he's given $150 to clear them. Tractors, driven by oil and petrol, do the work of sweat and plows much faster, much deeper. More rice in less time if the scheme works, and it is working. Then at last, the planting of the first seeds in the nursery beds. The tender shoots need careful shelter. Storm and scorching sun must be kept from them. Anxious months and years will have been wasted if these early days are not carefully watched. New schemes bring new problems. Always government experts are ready to give help and advice. The settlers have a planter's council, guided by a sadang, or village headman. Their council is represented at the district council and so they keep in touch with new settlers and administration and advise on dates for planting. For in Tanjong Karang, a system of irrigation and drainage enables man to say when and how much water will flow into the paddy fields. No longer is there fear of flood may end the fight between hunger and plenty. It shows the way to a future of a well-contented, well-fed, prosperous Malaya. The pioneers tackle their tough job with optimism and with a will. The work of engineering is done. From the swamp, water flows down to the new paddy lands. Good water, in which rice can grow. It can be directed where it is wanted, where thirsty paddy needs it, through the plant's veins, into the swelling bud. So the first paddy heads gladden the hearts of the dogged pioneers. And now it is potong paddy, the hour of rice harvest, the hour of triumph. The rewards of labor are being reaped, food for the empty bowl. Today, as new rice fields conquer the swamps, so the day of Malaya being self-supporting is that much nearer. The Tanjong Karang scheme, biggest of its kind in Malaya, leads the way for others. Mm -hmm. 